Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to you as we share in this time of worship today. Our call to worship for today is taken from Psalm 103, where the psalmist says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. So now let us worship God together. Now you join me in prayer. Let's pray together. Almighty God, it is such a, a blessing to us uh, when we lift up our voices in praise. It, it does our soul good to praise you for who you are and for the many ways in which you lovingly care for us. And so as we give thanks that you are the sovereign creator of all things, we realise how much we depend on you and we thank you that you know our needs you provide for us we praise you that you are a god of power and that your power holds everything and holds us and yet you are a god of gentleness who holds us tenderly and carefully in the shelter and the security of your love Thank you for blessing us each day as you surround us with your goodness and your mercy. We live in a world where there are many voices and many sounds competing to be heard. And yet we thank you uh, that we have your word to guide us, the life and ministry of Jesus to teach us and the presence of your spirit to help us thank you that as we have heard Jesus voice speaking to us we have learned to follow him his steps marking out the way for us help us to follow faithfully not allowing ourselves to become distracted nor to lose heart so that we would wander away from you but keep on following wherever you lead and should we stumble, hold us steady and direct our footsteps so that we will follow you until 
our journey's end. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Creator, our Redeemer and Sustainer, on this day and in this place, with awe and gratitude, we acknowledge your presence with us. We focus for a few moments on others, in contrast to thinking about our own cares and worries, and bringing them to you in prayer. We pray this morning for all people everywhere affected by natural disasters, civil conflicts or war, where men, women and children suffer through no fault of theirs. To the weak, give them strength. To the oppressed, give them freedom and light. To live life in happiness and peace. We continue to pray for peace in the world. God of love, we pray for the people who have experienced trauma and devastation in their lives. Give strength to everyone actively involved in helping all those affected as they try to recover from the heartbreaking devastation of losing a loved one. Specifically those shot in Los Angeles recently, we pray that everyone affected by this atrocity will be surrounded with kindness, comfort and hope for the future through your spirit of peace. God of love, we pray for all those who have been bereaved and who mourn losing their loved one or a close friend in an experience that touches all of us at some time. The huge gaps that are left are sometimes difficult, if not impossible, to fill. Lord, for all those touched by a loss today, through your grace and closeness to them, their families and their friends, comfort, sustain and surround them with loving and healing friendships, lighten the darkness of those in despair. In this time where hardship is so prevalent, strikes across so many sectors of society, NHS in turmoil. God of love, give tolerance and patience to those in the middle. Help those in authority who can find solutions to work hard together 
to start to mend the fractures between groups and build the bridges of conciliation and harmony again. We pray for the church worldwide. Infuse the leadership with sound judgment and inspire all Christians everywhere to be true to the example given to us by Jesus Christ. Where there are divisions, we ask that you sow the seeds of tolerance and understanding. We pray for our ministers, especially those in our denomination, as they continue to lead us in our spiritual journey. God of love, we pray that the future of our parish will be filled with blessed hope as we strive to become more of who we aspire to be, delivering acts of kindness and concern for each other as we tell others about Jesus. God of love, we pray for all those who are suffering, those in physical or mental pain, and those who are terminally ill. Surround them with your love and light and support and sustain all the people providing care for them, especially in this time of doctor shortages and challenges in delivering health care. In a moment of silence, we bring before you our private thoughts and prayers, those things and people close to our hearts. God of love, we pray for ourselves and for each other. We acknowledge our weaknesses. We lay ourselves open to you speaking to us. Stir us up with holy discontent over a world which gives its riches to those who have plenty already. God of love, help us both to share our resources with those who have little and to receive with humility the gifts given to us by you. God of love, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed or the fever of life is over and our work is done and when that time comes, gracious God, in your mercy, grant us safe lodging and holy rest and peace at last. We ask all these things through the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am telling you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who goes in through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow someone else. Instead, they will run away from such a person, because they do not know his voice. Jesus told them this parable, but they did not understand what he meant. So Jesus said again, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All others who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Those who come in by me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I have come in order that you might have life. Life in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. When the hired man who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the father knows me and I know the father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me, and I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice and they will become one flock 
with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up all of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. Well, this morning we come to this wonderful passage where Jesus says of himself, I am the good shepherd. This image of Jesus as the good shepherd is both a well-known and a well-loved image. It really draws on the image of the shepherd and sheep that is woven into the language and imagery uh, throughout the Bible. It is a familiar image uh, to us, I'm sure, uh, but while it is less familiar in our modern world, in Jesus' day, one of the most familiar figures on the landscape was that of the shepherd. And one of the reasons that Jesus used the metaphor of shepherd and, and sheep was because God has been describing himself as a shepherd and his people as sheep for centuries. As Jesus spoke of the Good Shepherd, the Pharisees and those listening would have caught on straight away to what Jesus was pointing to, to the image that he was trying to arouse in their, in their thoughts. Some of the most recognisable verses in the Bible are from the, the 23rd Psalm, where it says, The Lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pasture he leads me beside still waters he restores my soul he leads me in right paths other psalms follow this very same theme you led your people like a flock by the hand of moses and aaron says psalm 77 we your people the sheep of your pasture will praise you forever, uh, says Psalm 79. 
he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care, says Psalm 95. And of course, there's that well-known passage in Isaiah that says of us that we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. Well, the Messiah that God had promised to come was also described as a shepherd of sheep. Uh, it says that he tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads them, those that have young. That's Isaiah 40, verse 11. And as Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he was drawing the people's minds to that image of the, the shepherd and the sheep. And his words would have certainly caused a stir. But his next words would have astounded them even more. I am the good shepherd, says Jesus, who is willing to die for the sheep, who is willing to lay down his life for his sheep. Now, a shepherd's job, as I'm sure you can imagine, wasn't easy. Sheep were liable to wander and get lost in hillside passes and ravines and so on. And the shepherd had to lead the sheep to good pasture. He also had to be protective and, and watch over them. There was the danger, of course, of wolves looking for food or thieves out to steal the sheep. So a shepherd had to be watchful, courageous, and at times even be prepared to put their lives at risk to keep the sheep, the sheep under their care safe. And an important and yet much overlooked part of a shepherd's job uh, was to be a gate. And this is the other way that Jesus describes himself in this passage this morning. He's not just the, the good shepherd. In verse 7, Jesus says, I am telling you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. The shepherd, you see, also acted as a gate at the sheepfold. Now, gates, as we know, are designed that they're there for two purposes. They can either be a way in or a way, a way out. Gates can provide an entrance, uh, but they can also be a barrier, keep out, no admittance, private. Uh, so being a gate was, was very much part of a shepherd's job. Uh, he would, of course, ensure the sheep were safely gathered into the fold, especially at night. He would lead them out to pasture. And he would protect the sheep uh, during the day, but he would also protect them at night. See, in the sheepfold, there was no actual gate. And so what would happen was that at night, the shepherd would actually lie down across the entrance uh, to the sheepfold. And uh, he would literally be the gate, effectively sealing off the enclosure, not only ensuring that the sheep wouldn't wander out in the dark and get lost and into all kinds of trouble, but also that thieves, robbers and, and wild animals would have a difficult time getting in while the shepherd was on guard. <clears throat> so his body basically became the gate uh, that protected the sheep. And Jesus says the thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy, but I have come in order that you might have life, and life in all its fullness. And that's really what Jesus came to bring us, life in all its fullness. <clears throat> uh, then Jesus says, I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for his sheep. Now it's helpful to know the context uh, in which Jesus says that he is the shepherd, who is also the gate. Uh, in chapter 9 on the Sabbath, Jesus had healed a man who had been born blind. And when the Pharisees heard of this, uh, they weren't altogether happy. They were certain that the blind man was a sinner and that the reason for his blindness was, was that sin. Uh, and they were equally certain that, that Jesus was a sinner. And they couldn't recognize, reconcile really Jesus being a sinner and yet being able to perform uh, such a miracle as restoring this blind man his sight. And so they, they questioned the blind man and his parents in order to try and trap Jesus. They really wanted to discredit Jesus. They were wanting rid of Jesus. But when the ma man tells them that only someone who, could, who came from God could do such a thing as, as heal him in the way he, Jesus had, uh, they threw him out of the synagogue. 
They literally thought they had the right to close the gate on this man. Keep out, get out. They set themselves up as the gatekeepers for God. They decided who were sinners and who were not. They decided who deserved access to God and who didn't. And it's in this context that Jesus says, I am the gate and I am the good shepherd. Instead of being a barrier, Jesus is a living gate. The good shepherd who opens the way into God's presence, into his father's family, into the safety, the security, the protection of his father's love, blessing and abundance. Jesus also said in, in verse 9 of this passage, I am the gate. Whoever comes in by me will be saved. He will come in and go out and, and find pasture. Well, the, the symbolism of pasture uh, is really one of blessing, particularly the blessing of God. Again, think of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness and right paths. Pasture is a rich place. It's a safe place. It's a good place. You think of uh, running streams and green grass, a place of nourishment and, and, and life. And this coming in and going out describes a life of safety and security, of abundance and plenty. During the night there was peace and, and security and during the day there was safety and there was pasture. So Jesus is the shepherd who through laying down his life provides the gate through which men and women enter into God's sheepfold. And he is the shepherd through whom they find pasture. And Jesus, the shepherd, calls his sheep and they follow him because they know him. Jesus says in verses 3 and 4, the sheep hear the shepherd's voice as he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice, says Jesus. Well, Jesus says that the shepherd leads the sheep. He goes ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Because they know his voice. The shepherd leads and the sheep follow. And the reason the sheep follow is because they have come to know the shepherd and to recognise the shepherd's voice. In verse uh, 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and as the Father knows me and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me. I think that, that's remarkable, isn't it? That, it really is. Jesus uses the relationship he shares with the Father as an example, as a statement really, of a relationship with him. As the Father knows me and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep and they know me. Jesus draws us into the sphere of his Father's love and in knowing him we rest secure. So my friends, today as you go about your day and as you go about your week, may you know the care and the presence and uh, may you hear the voice of the shepherd calling you and leading you and that you may follow him and find pasture and find life and abundance. God bless you.
Well, my thanks to Anne and Bobby Gray for sharing in this service today and to Alison Scott for leading us in our praise. Friends, as you follow the Good Shepherd this week, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a good week.